Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. Today we're finally going to be covering the better Congolese leader, Zinga Mabande, and in my opinion, the only Congolese leader that is playable. Zinga's ability is Queen of the Ndogo and Matamba, which gives cities on your capital continent, including your capital, which makes you already better than the Maya, have 10% food, production, gold, faith, science, and culture yields. However, cities not on your continent get minus 15% yields. So this is two times that they've done this cities within a limited range get a bonus and cities outside of that range get a malice sort of balancing. And I'm here to tell you that that malice really does not matter at all. You want to be settling as many cities as you can possibly settle. In most normal games, you're going to get around 10 to 12 cities. And in most normal games, your continent is going to be big enough to house five to eight of those cities. So you're potentially going to be getting an 80% yield increase offset by a minus 30% decrease, which is nothing. You're still netting 50% overall. Not to mention the fact that your core cities are usually the cities that are the best and most productive. They have the highest population. And off-continent cities are usually going to be your later cities, cities that are slower to develop. Which means that those negative percentages really don't start costing you that much until super late game. And that really doesn't matter at that point. At that point, your bonus percentages will have won you the game. This ability is strong enough to make her better than Movimba alone, but if you add to the fact that Nzinga actually gets the best yield in the game, Faith, by building the best district in the game, the Holy Site, and you end up with a super powerhouse. In the last video, I've already said that the Congo ability, Nikisi, is super great. Relics, artifacts, and sculpture great works give you plus two food, plus two production, plus four gold, and plus one faith. You get 50% more artist, musician, and merchant points, and your palace can hold four great work slots. And for Nzinga, it really is great. All of these yields get bonuses on your home continent, and you can easily get really high food, faith, and production bonuses very early in the game, especially if you get a hero out. You can really get high pop cities with your unique district, and you get science or gold or culture religions along with work ethic, and you just profit off of those 10% bonuses. Not to mention if you have something like Kill with Kisawani, or your cities are ecstatic, and those percentage modifiers are really starting to add up to boost you to the moon. Speaking of the unique district, you get the Mabanza, the unique neighborhood, and it's as good as a neighborhood can be, as I said last time. It gives plus two gold, plus or plus two food, plus four gold, and can only be built on woods and rainforests, but it is half cost and comes with guilds. With Movimba, it's not really worth building, because what are you doing with your large cities? You're really not getting any bonuses from having these large cities. You get no benefit from a religion of your choosing, and no religion that you are actually capable of defending. However, with Nzinga, you can get 30 pop cities. Getting the science per follower religion, or the culture per follower religion. And if you get the science per follower religion in a 30 pop city, you get 8 science alone from religion in that city before you add in your 10% yield, before you add in the Void Singer's Faith bonus, before you add in your campus science, or your Pingala modifiers, or your city state modifiers, or your Kilwa Kisawani modifiers. And suddenly you can see how powerful having large cities can possibly be. Then you get the Nagal Mbebe, the swordsman that only requires 5 iron and is super strong versus ranged attacks. Uh, with Nzinga, again, these are really good. You have the production to build them pretty easily, and you have the gold to buy them pretty easily. You have an incentive to clear out your home continent. You also get enough faith early on in order to be able to buy them with the Grandmaster's Chapel, unlike Mavimba does. So you're just more able to benefit from units than Mavimba is able to benefit. Mavimba was a leader that came out with launch and who was strong then, but without faith, he sucks. Nzinga is indicative of the new philosophy towards leaders. She gets a simple to understand bonus, and she uses it to abuse all the mechanics that exist in the game now. And a lot of the mechanics in the game are existing around abusing faith. So if you can abuse faith like every other leader in the game, and you get a 10% yield bonus to all of your cities pretty much for abusing that faith, suddenly you're just 10% better than the majority of civs in the game if they don't have like a hyper-focused bonus. 
you get lots of early production, which means you get a religion pretty quick. A quick religion means you usually get a medieval monumentality or even an earlier monumentality golden age. You can get extra yields to faith so you can get settlers out with that monumentality golden age really easily. Those settlers feed back into the extra yield loop. You play void singers and get cultists in the mid game and suddenly all of your cities explode with population and gold. Or you get a religion and get Yerevan or Mont Saint Michel or even without those you can get enough martyr apostles to get enough relics to be okay. And and then boom, suddenly your cities explode in the mid game. You have faith to buy great people and science and culture to use those great people on useful wonders or things. You have so much gold you can win emergencies. You can get the vampires and hyper boost your capital cities with like insane yields. Her abilities unlock without any thought from the player and can only be turned off by the map generation. So in my opinion, she's really strong. Nazinga gets an 8 out of 10 for domination. You get bonus production, you get bonus gold, you have bonus faith, you have bonus culture, you have bonus science. All of these things lead to an advanced large army. Yes, the cities you take will have less yields, but it is better to have 20 mediocre cities than to have 8 good cities. She gets the domination snowball going early on and she doesn't really let up. It's just that you have no specific bonuses towards warring and your unique unit's not that great. She gets an 8 out of 10 for both science and culture. Again, your yields are improved. You get the great artist points. You get a strong religion with large cities that can boost with that religion. You can get the vampires and have mega boosted yields in your capital for science victories. You have faith to buy naturalists. You do, can you do tend to not get rid of rainforest, which kind of sucks for culture victory, but you just... You get so much culture you can get to conservation and you can get to those uh, wonders that help you improve your uh, yield, your appeal much faster than most people can get. You just don't get that many hyper specific bonuses so that's not going to push her to a 10 out of 10. If she got the culture that like Pericles gets then she'd be 10 but not, not right now. Diplomacy also works well for Nzinga. You get gold and you get a lot of gold. You get so much gold. That gold helps you with emergencies. You also get the production to build the Patala Palace and the Statue of Liberty, and you get culture to get those wonders. Your cities will have a high population to push those wonders out, and you're going to have enough district space for your Diplo Quarter, so 6 out of 10. Religion is what sets her apart from Mavimba, but in my opinion, religion is her weakest victory condition. Yes, you get lots of faith. But you don't get a profit bonus, and you don't get cheaper or stronger apostles or missionaries. I see religion more as a way to boost her other victory conditions rather than a victory in and of itself. So 5 out of 10. Nzinga is everything that Mavimba wants to be. She gets religion, she can use that religion to exploit the game, his bonuses are for helping him benefit from religions that he can't build. She gets faith, he gets bonuses for relics but struggles to get the faith to get those relics. She gets a boost to the flat relic yields, and he just gets the flat relic yields. Nazinga is A tier. She's not broken, but it's pretty close. Let me know what you think about her in the comments down below, and as always, I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.